Good morning, and welcome on this beautiful Sunday morning. Wherever you're praying with us, if you're here or if you're live on our Facebook feed, we're glad that you're with us so we can pray together on this gorgeous Sunday morning. Today, we, the church, celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you're here in the church, we thank you for silencing any electronic devices that you may have brought into the church so we can have uninterrupted worship together. Before we begin, we'll just take a few moments to quiet ourselves at the beginning of our prayer time. Presiding this morning is Father Michael, assisted by Deacon Pete. And with all of that, let's stand and begin. Lord, what secrets whisper the morning light? Forming words on precious dew. Will they tell me of your love for me? Ever living, ever true Through your morning skies Let creation rise As you open up my eyes Lord, what secrets whisper the morning light? And just what mysteries will they tell? What sweet mysteries will they tell? Lord, what secrets whisper the morning light? Breathing peace on break of day Will they tell me of your plans for me? How to follow in your way Through your heavens bright Bring your power and might the darkness fades from night Lord, what secrets whisper the morning light Just what mysteries will they tell Just what mysteries will they tell What secrets whisper the morning light Calling birds through painted sky Will they tell me how I can serve for you How to praise your name on high Through your every land Bring the love you plant As you hold us in your hand Lord, what secrets whisper the morning light Just what mysteries will they tell What sweet mysteries will they tell What sweet mysteries will they tell? What sweet mysteries will they tell? What sweet mysteries they will tell?
morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My sisters and brothers, we gather today, the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Season, to celebrate the Word of God and contemplate the meaning of the course of discipleship going by the readings of this day. And so before we proceed with this solemn celebration, let us call to mind our sins and pray Jesus for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might and giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in each and every one of us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Grant this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day, I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But when it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones, I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> My soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting for you. God, you are my God, whom I seek. Oh God, 
God, you are my God, whom I seek. For you my flesh pines, my soul thirsts, like the earth parched, lifeless without water. My soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in your sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Your kindness is a greater good than life itself. My lips will glorify you. My soul is thirsting. My soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live, lifting up my hands I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet Shall my soul be satisfied With exultant lips my mouth shall praise you My soul is thirsting My soul is thirsting My soul is thirsting For you, O Lord, my God For you have been my help, you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I shall forge My soul clings fast to you, your right hand holds me firm. In the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting, my soul is thirsting for you. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed on a third day to be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned to Peter and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with the angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Well, we, I'm so happy to see our children, our mommy, daddy, grandpa, friends, and partners, all of us as a community, um, returning once again to this beautiful temple of the Lord to celebrate our family, to celebrate love, to celebrate who God expects us to be, to celebrate the cost of discipleship. 9.30 mass, as you all know, is always, when you look around, you see our kids, our children sitting in between mommy and daddy. And that is what makes a family. And also the spiritual father, they call Catholic priest fathers, the spiritual fathers, the deacons, all the presiding at liturgy. I say Abraham, Isaac, Jacob would have been doing in the ancient days before we established the modern official church. So today, from the readings, what we celebrate today is God's love, God's forgiveness. We celebrate our baptism. We celebrate the meaning of all the sacraments you and I have received so far. We celebrate what it means to be a Christian, the cost of discipleship. Um, Pope Francis, not long ago, he came out with one of his literal encyclical, a book, um, Tyro Evangelii Gaudium in Latin, but the English translation is always the joy of the gospel. And what Francis meant by the joy of the gospel, we all know. When you read St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 1, verses 16 through 17, the meaning of the gospel is embedded there. The past few days that we have celebrated daily masses, we've read from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Even the first two, three chapters, we shall continue reading Paul's letter to the Corinthians this coming week, their masses. The meaning of the gospel is embedded there. It's simply Jesus Christ crucified. The cross, the suffering, the passion, what it means to be a follower of Jesus. That Jesus himself 
sums up in today's gospel. Whoever wants to be my disciple should do what? Should f- carry his or her cross and come after me. And that is what we celebrate today. Every other thing that we do today rallies around this theme of the cause, what it means to be a disciple. I strongly believe that although God deals with us in mysterious ways, the readings today points us to the direction of the divine expectation. What God expects of each and every one of us, what God expects of Pope Francis, what God expects of the cardinals, the bishops, what God expects of Father Michael, pastors, all of us, the deacons, every baptized Christian. God wants us to deepen our relationship with him by discerning his will and living a holy life that conforms to the gospel that Paul defines in Romans chapter 1, verses 16 through 17. The power of the gospel, Jesus Christ crucified. God wants us at all times and in every age and circumstance to recognize the prophetic rules of sufferings, the meaning of the cross, of the crucifix, mortification, modesty, and self-denial. Somebody said to me a few days ago, Oh, Father Michael, the times we are now are very hard. We live in very difficult times. I smile. I said, yes, we live in difficult times. It, de- it depends on what you mean by times. There is nothing wrong with one o'clock. There is nothing wrong with every afternoon since creation. There is nothing wrong with two o'clock, three o'clock, or this week, or last week. Literally, there is nothing wrong with the times. But what is wrong is what we, our human beings, manage the times. And he smiles. He says, oh, yeah, it's true. It depends on what you mean by the times. There's nothing wrong with creation, how God created everything. Remember the seven days of creation? And God saw that everything was good. Creatures, our pets, one another, human beings, we are all good. God saw, created us, everything to be good. But it's how we manage time, the management of time. It's what Father Michael does at one o'clock that is wrong or bad. It's what any bishop, any priest, any of us does at 7 a.m. in the afternoon, in the night, on Monday, Tuesdays. (laughs) That is wrong. Times are good, but it depends on what each and every one of us does at every time. And that is the challenge, what God expects of us. God wants us to appreciate times, to appreciate the costly price of being a Christian. God wants us to reevaluate the value of the gospel, the meaning of the cross, in the face of contemporary challenges. What is the meaning of the cross in the face of coronavirus? What is the meaning of the cross? in the face of violence on the streets of the United States and all over the world. What is wrong? What is the value of the cross in the clash between Republicans and Democrats? I'm not a politician, but I'm just using that. I know there are politics (laughs) all over the world. I'm not preaching politics, but I'm using that as an example. There's nothing wrong with all that God has blessed us with but how we manage this time. In today's second reading, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, St. Paul reminds the same human beings like us, the early Christian community in Rome that we call Paul's letter to the Romans, God's expectation of the ancient Romans. God expected right conduct. God expected ethical conduct from them. St. Paul reminded them, God expected spiritual worship with songs, with joy, the kind of music that Peter and Chris is leading us at liturgy, this moment, how we join, celebrate within our hearts the truth, conformity with God's will, 
rejection of worldliness, secularism, rejection of anything goes. Not only Paul, in Jeremiah, is very clear. Look at today's um, first reading from Prophet Jeremiah. I was also looking at us. I saw some of us follow the reading. You know, I said, that is cool. It makes sense. Whether you read the reading along when Katie was reading or when you go back home, look at Jeremiah, the first reading of today. He suffered so much for the sake of the gospel. Jeremiah was speeded upon because he preached the truth that his brothers and sisters, the Judeans, they should abandon idolatry, worship the true God of Israel. He suffered so much that Jeremiah was under pressure. You see that text of Jeremiah, we call it the consolation or the complaint, lamentation of Jeremiah. Jeremiah lamented like Jesus in Psalm 2. Emil, dio, emil, dio. Peke about, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Although Jeremiah did not say that specifically, but Jeremiah said, God, why did you create me? Oh God, you duped me. God, you tricked me. Jeremiah said, God, you scammed me into this business. <laughs> God, where are you that I'm suffering? I'm preaching the gospel. They are bullying me, they are kicking me, they are mocking me. Jeremiah was thrown into a cistern, into a pit. He was abandoned, he was punished. And the pressure was so much on Jeremiah that Jeremiah had to say, God, where are you? The Bible says Jeremiah cursed even the day he was born. Is there in the Bible? God, you scammed me into this business of God. Why have you abandoned me? Like Jesus on the cross, my God, my God, <laughs> why have you forsaken me? God, where are you? I know there are moments in our life, this is self-explanatory, that we do feel that way once in a while. Oh, is that happening in the church? Oh, I can't expect that from a priest. Oh, my God, is, that a, is a Christian doing that? Oh, my God, how can a bishop do that? Oh, my God. He received Holy Communion. Oh, how can a married person do that? Oh, how can a leader? There are things that we do as Christians that are not expected of us. The challenges of being a discipleship. And Jesus summarizes this today in today's gospel. If you want to follow me, pick up your cross and accompany me. There are many crosses. It comes in different ways. If you want to follow me, it was so beautiful listening to Peter and Chris um, let that um, psalm, today's psalm, if you look at it, my soul is thirsting for you. My soul is longing for you. And what is the you? It's the cross of Jesus. It's the value of God. Each and every one of us, all of us, it doesn't matter your status in the church. Once you have been baptized, the pope, the bishop, the pastors, the priests, Father Michael in particular, we ought to always be longing for truth because God is the truth. Oh Lord, my soul is longing for God, the truth. To be a follower of Jesus, the cross is to carry the cross of searching for truth and practicing truth. The cause of leadership, that was what Peter was also being expected of the Peter of the gospel, the biblical Peter, not this Deacon Peter, I'm not referring to <laughs> the biblical Peter. Peter was handed over the keys of the kingdom and is a continuation of that reading. To be a good leader, a good disciple of Jesus, you ought to be patient, you ought to be generous, open the doors, open the arms, long for the truth, long for unity, long for reconciliation, Long for things that are good. Forgive one another. Be charitable. Mourn with those who mourn. Suffer with those. Laugh with those who laugh. Pray for one another. Pray for the loved ones, the souls of the loved ones gone before us. It is not easy to be a disciple of Jesus. The cost of being Jesus' disciple. The cost of longing for Jesus. is very challenging. This is what we celebrate today. There is nothing wrong with Monday, Tuesdays, through Fridays. 
There's nothing wrong with one o'clock of any age or any times. What is wrong is what Father Michael does on Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and every time. God is constant. The God that we celebrate today is a God that Vietnamese are worshipping. The same thing God that you find in Italy, in Australia, in different parts of Africa, in the Catholic Church, the same reading, the same text. This is what God expects of us. So my dear friends, we celebrate the course of discipleship. Beautiful readings. When you go back home, look at those texts again and ask yourself, can I identify myself with Peter? Am I Peter in today's readings? Am I Jeremiah? Are there moments that you feel like staying back from the church? And if there are those moments, please, nothing, nothing, nothing like, like St. Paul would have put it should ever separate you from the love of God. It is not easy to be a Catholic in the challenging times that we are in, except with the grace of God. So we pray at this Mass that the Lord may continue to give us the skills, the energy, the strength to carry our daily crosses. And I, as I would always often put in a funny way, I know it is not easy to wear this mask. And wearing this mask themselves is a cross. And I always salute your love, your courage. I'm not kidding. For you to leave your homes, risk your life. Sometimes you can't really breathe well and with the mass. And I pray the Lord to bless each and every one of you and that we may continue to live out the course of discipleship that the Lord expects of us. This is our prayer, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please let us rise and profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of my maker of heaven and earth. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, born of the order of all our ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered dead and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confirm what I for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the faithful. My dear friends, let us return to Jesus, presenting our prayers and petitions, asking him to give each and every one of the, us the grace to always carry our daily crosses and follow him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who hear the word of God through Christ's church, that the word might transform us and help us to do God's will each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the leaders and governments throughout the world, for those in the world's military forces, and for all civil officials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for our Holy Father and his brother bishops, that like St. Peter, they may allow Christ's word to judge and correct their words and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We join in prayer for working people in our country and throughout the world, that they may be paid fairly for their efforts and their rights may be protected. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we join in prayer for all the sick, especially Nicholas Bedell, Christopher Amato, and Joan Brennan, that they may be returned to good health. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayers. And for the faithfully departed, especially Albina Gaviella and Mel Farrell Sr., that they may rest in peace and rise in glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we join in prayer for the intentions in our prayer intentions book. And all the prayers that we keep deep within our own hearts. And for Mercedes Bub and happy birthday, Paul, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God our Father, help us and all people to follow the way of your Son and to always be able to recognize the hiddenness of your Son in the mystery of the cross. We ask this prayer as through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. May these sacred offerings, O Lord, confer on us always the blessings of salvation 
that what it celebrates in mystery of the cross, it may accomplish in power. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that our people form as one by the unity of the Trinity, met the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we acclaim. by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, all the bishops, the clergy, religious, and your family gathered here. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, as we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph's our spouse, with the blessed apostles, all the saints, Mother Cabrini, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called here to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Per ripsum et quimipsum 
eti in ihipso esti dayo patri omnipotenti unitati spiritu hosanti omnes ohono en gloria per omnia secula seculo ro Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as citizens in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days and in our families, that by the help of your mercy and love, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and dangers as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Sisters and brothers, behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
hear us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and steer us to serve you in our neighbors. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Some quick announcements this morning. First of all, in preparing to receive communion, as always, we ask that everyone sits or kneels when Father, Mike, Father Michael retrieves the Eucharist from the tabernacle. When approaching to receive, please remove your mask and gloves, and please remain six feet away from the person in front of you. We have a special treat for you this morning going on over in the Paris Center. We ask that you stop by over there today for breakfast to go. And that'll be from 9 a.m. to 12.30 today. It's bacon or sausage with cheese and eggs on a roll with a beverage. It's only $5 a person on Knights of Columbus. My brother Knights are over there now preparing that for you. So uh, don't miss an opportunity, $5 a person. It's gonna be a wonderful opportunity to uh, grab some breakfast and go. And as always, please remember to take a bulletin when you leave Mass today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Rest in me. 